Hey guys, Brian here with Forest Farm Project. We hope you're enjoying this electrical series with the kitchen expansion on Terry's old house. We're going to get in the storage room here, finish up the electrical, and show you how we round everything up and get it in the panel. Enjoy. And let's go ahead and get some staples and staple this stuff up. So when, you, when you're driving these staples in, you don't want to smash the wire. You just want to get up to it close, but don't crunch it because it will mess up the insulation. It's just mainly meant to hold that wire in place and not let it flop around. <clears throat> So just get it close. It's not crushing it or anything. It's still got some room. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make this receptacle up. When we have single wires in boxes, we generally don't make them up. But if we have two or more wires, we go ahead and make that joint on the rough end. It just saves a lot of effort on the finish. And if you see anything you need to fix, you can fix it right then. Gives you a chance to look and see, did I get all my wires over here? And that's something you just learn over time. All right, uh, yeah. I normally keep a little trash box around right now. I'm just going to throw it on the floor. So to make this up, it's a receptacle. Uh, in the old days, this would be a GFI receptacle, and then it would feed, you know, the one with the little buttons on it that you'd test and reset. And then the other one would be a standard receptacle on the other end of this circuit. But nowadays, you have to have an arc fault, ground fault combination breaker for kitchen receptacles. So that's what this will be on. So it doesn't require that funky little outlet. So I'm going to twist these wires together, put my pliers on them, give them a good twist so they got good contact, cut one of them off. We buy these green ground wire nuts. They have a hole in it so that you can slide it right over the wire. That's why I cut that other one off. Really handy for making a receptacle or switch joint if you need a ground wire. Twist that thing up tight and we're good to go. Push that in the box and wrap it up just to hold them in place. Make sure, actually the six inches is from the back of the box. There's seven. I'll leave a little extra on these. Fold them up like I would the other wires. When you're packing wires in the box, if you leave your wires out on the edge, when a sheet rocker comes in, he runs a little roto zip type tool in there. He'll go right across them wires and cut them in two half the time. So it's your job to get them wires back in that box as far as you can get them where they're not going to get hit. This is another two wire that we would normally make up, but because we have to jump this to the existing kitchen circuit, that's an additional power wire here. So we're just going to roll these up for now and we'll make it up later once we get further into this project. So I'm just going to roll them up and get them in the box where the sheet rocker don't hit it. Sheet rocker's us <laughs> on this job. And if you notice, when a wire's coming down from the top, I tend to fold it over, over, and over and in. If it's coming from the bottom, I tend to fold it under and roll it under. It just goes <clears throat> more naturally into the box because that last fold allows it to just go into the box. Now we're going to have to get these wires down into the panel. I'm going to drill a couple holes here. I want to make sure there's nothing above. You can feel on that top plate, sometimes they'll drive nails in there and you don't want to hit nails because they're really hard on your bits. Nor do you want to hit the other wires up there. Exactly. Don't want to go through the roof either. That's really close. Ready to put some wires up there. Get this number 10. This seems to want to hang on to my ladder down there. I'm going to run it through with these 
other larger wires because we got a big hole over here that was the existing wire. Grab it with my pliers, make my fingers last a little longer, maybe. When you're messing around, see them nails? Them things will rip you to shreds. You really got to be aware of yourself, what you're doing and where you're doing it. I like to straighten my wires out and make them look pretty. The inspector has a lot more respect for you when you do a neat job. If you got them all clustered up and running diagonal and all twisted around, they look real close. They don't think you know what you're doing. All right, there you go. Working on a panel with the power on is never safe. And so I'm not going to show you me doing that because I normally do like a fool, but I've been on it so long. You get foolish. But anyway, don't do it. So this Milwaukee work light here, the rocket is phenomenal. It really helps out and it's going to help out today. Turn that bad boy on. Boom. We can turn the power off and it's like daylight in there. Think that's high enough, Brian? Take it up a little more. Okay, how about that? Because we got that. Let's put it in here. Just to show you guys a little bit about this light, it runs off of 18 volt batteries, any size. The head swivels and will blind you, as you can see. Not only that, but the individual heads in, in, yeah, you swivel. Can, you can point them wherever you need them. And each one is a thousand lumens. So right now we've got 3,000 lumens of light. Let's cut the power off here. Unfortunately, you ready? Yep. Boom. Wait Look a minute. I thought the power light. was off. <laughs> My whole life I have used screwdrivers and twist, 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 twist. And I didn't need a drill, but man, my fingers and hands are getting wore out. These little 12 volt drills are lightweight. You can hang it on your belt when you're doing any finish work or pulling these panels. This is a square drive. <laughs> Boom, it's out. Why beat yourself up? Let this little tool do the work for you. All right, let's take this down. And I see light, so and bright light, and I am not used to that bright of light. It feels like the light's still on, but it's that light stand. And I'm thinking, ooh, I'm working on a hot panel because there's light. It's good to think you're working on a hot panel when, when you're not. Better than to think you're not when you are. So. And for now, we're just going to get these wires in the panel. We're not going to hook them up because we don't want any of this hot yet. Exactly. So let's get these connectors in here. Knock a couple holes out. Let me get that out of your way. Thanks, little guy. Sure thing. Put one there, one there, and one. You only need two. Oh, you need three, you're right. Three. One back here. Pull these out of here. Boom. And the connectors we're using are a 3 8 two screw. These little plugs that come out of this panel are real close to a quarter. I worked on a guy's house years ago, a friend of mine, and helped him rewire his house. And his little boy would come up every day and he'd stand there staring at me. He didn't talk much, he was young, but he'd stand there staring at me because I'd give him change and he'd wait. So I was working on a panel one day. Long story short, I saved up about 50 of these little plugs. Had him in my pocket and he'd come walking up and I'd always jiggle my change. And I jiggled that big old water change. He got the biggest grin and I pulled all that out and put him in his hands and he was just a smiling. He looked at me and whoo, <laughs> threw him at me. He wasn't too happy. Yep. Three inch two screw, spin that little bottom off. Screws go on top, open it up before you put it up there. So that you can get the wires down in there. Put the nut on the bottom. That one's only going to get one wire in it, so I'm not going to worry about opening it up as much. It's open enough for one wire. Power's off the panel, so we should be good. Again, I like to make my wires look pretty. Kind of straight. Not perfect, but pretty straight. This will take a square drive as well, but I don't have the other loose uh, one that's uh, like a screwdriver type. I just have the drill type and I really don't like to drill these in because I don't want to squash that wire too hard and cause it to short. Got to be careful when you shove these wires down in them holes. Let me take that one first. That if you drag it on this edge, it's kind of like a razor blade. Used to be again, metal was round. Now when they press these things out, they leave a sharp edge. It'll cut you. 
and it'll strip your wire if you're not careful. So you got to feed it down through there gently. I, I generally don't put more than two wires per connector. You get them all squished in there too tight. It's just not a good thing. You're asking for trouble that way. Yeah. So let me tighten these two down and they'll be ready to go. If you guys notice different colors of wire, 12 wire used 12 and 14 used to be white and that got confusing when it came to inspections as they started changing the way the codes were so now 14 wire would be white but this is 12 but now 14 wire is white 12 wire is yellow number 10 2 or 10 3 is going to be orange and any of your eights and sixes are still black but you but, know what now they've come back and started making some of those white i guess they figure yeah. they're so big it don't matter but any of your smaller <clears throat> wire 14 10 and 12 are all color coded yep white on the 14 but if you're in an old house you see white it might be 12 this is all 12 it's a 1970s house this didn't come about until around 2000 yeah maybe? somewhere in there somewhere in that area yep they started color coding now, even though we've got the main breaker off here, there's still power on these wires. So you gotta be careful around that. Now let's get this wire that goes over to our switch circuit in a, in a connector. Now let's put this connector in for the bottom wire, stick it through the hole, lay this on top. It was hard to see up there, but we've got better vision or better access here. So you wanna spin this? It went right on. Generally speaking, they don't. <laughs> So don't expect that every time. Sometimes you have to finagle them around. Let's get this wire in there. Again, that's hot. Don't touch it. Oops, I got it twisted the wrong direction. There we go. Get my screwdriver. All right, got that snugged up on there. That's all there is to it for now. Get these wires inside the panel. Make sure they're not touching anything. That would be a short, which is mainly that bus bar or those lugs down there. And we should be good to go. Okay. And now we got to put the cover back on. Put the cover back on so nobody gets in here and gets hurt. You have to align all your breakers. You probably want to get down here and get your main breaker lined up first. And then push the other breakers around until this is your main breaker down here. It's got to line up. These others, the bus bar will move around a little bit. See like that moves over. Start putting some screws in. We find that on this Milwaukee 12 volt screw gun, clutch setting a 12 is perfect. And we're in. Okay, Double check and make sure everything's in line. Everything's lined up. These breakers are all protruding through the panel like they should. Everything's still on. That stays off because it's just a spare right now and we're ready to turn the power back on when i'm flipping the main breaker i try to get away from it a little bit just in case you never know if something shorts out and boom uh, i normally do it with my left hand that's my most sacrificial hand i would think since i'm right-handed but since i can't walk through that wall i gotta do this and just to be safe i mean more than likely nothing's going to happen but panels blow up sometimes if you're trying to sheetrock or plumb even plumbing you know if you get water all over your house and it rots the floors it's going to cost you some money if you make a big mistake. Uh, if you sheetrock and you mess up, you can re-sheetrock. Most things can be fixed. What you can't fix is your life. You mess with electricity and you don't know what you're doing. That can cost you your, your life real quick. I've been close a few different times in my life. And I mean, I was bouncing off the floor one time and it, it's, I'm lucky I'm alive. But... Uh, you know, it's, it's really dangerous messing with electricity. If you don't know 100% what you're doing, don't touch it. I can't tell you how many houses Brian and I have went to where people have done their own work and then things didn't work right and they had fire hazards or just 
lots of different situations where somebody could have got hurt and they thought they knew what they were doing. So if you don't know what you're doing, get somebody who does. It's just not worth it. It's not worth the money that you're going to save trying to do your own work. If you don't know 100%, I'm comfortable doing this. I know how to do it. So be safe. It's not worth your life or anybody else's. All right. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that quick wiring seminar by Mr. Terry over here. Yeah, and filming by Brian, editing yeah. by Brian. Without Brian, uh, we could be here, but we wouldn't <laughs> be as good. We wouldn't be here if you weren't here. Yeah. I would be here. Yeah. And it wouldn't be near as good to be on a cell phone. <laughs> nah. It'd be pretty rough. Yeah, it'd be better than that, but. Yeah, all right. Well, we, uh, we still have to spray foam, but we still have to plumb as well. Next video will be plumbing, and then we'll do all of our spray foaming to close everything up. Get ready for a rough-in inspection on this portion of the project, because yep. the rest of it's already sheetrocked and finished. Obviously, we live in there. Yeah. So, so yep. All righty. Well, be sure to hit that big thumbs up if you like what you see. Subscribe, share us with your friends, and check back often. There's a whole heck of a lot more coming, guys. See you. Have a good one.